Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Sean here again. So Sean's Rabbit Channel Cook on the Producer and we're back with another rabbit farming video for you guys. It's been a real hectic week. So we're gonna give you guys a double whammy today. You're gonna get a rabbit farming and an aquaponics video in the same day. So definitely right after this one, look out for that aquaponics video. But today we're talking about automatic watering systems. So stay tuned, we'll be right back after the intro. Okay guys, we're back. Today we're talking about automatic watering systems. But there are some factors that influence whether or not people use automatic watering systems. In most cases, I, I think, at least here in Trinidad and Tobago, I think it's a cost factor because the, uh, the components to set it up are a bit pricey. But I am a firm believer in the use of automatic watering systems. The main thing, of course, is that it's a big time and labor saving device. It just takes a lot of time to give water to your rabbits on a daily basis if you have a lot of rabbits. Even if you just have a few rabbits, uh, you can also benefit from the fact that your rabbits always have a clean and ready source of drinking water. Crocs and bowls and things like that are okay but you always run the risk of the water being contaminated by urine and feces and things like that as well as flies, insects, every, anything that has access to your rabbitry uh, is a possible contaminant to that water so I firmly believe in the use of automatic watering systems on a small scale persons tend to use a lot of these uh, watering bottles like what you see on this cage here uh, these are uh, glass they also come in plastic, but these, this one is made from glass and you have this attachment that screws onto the bottle. Uh, but you're going to have to keep refilling that bottle every day and sometimes twice a day depending on the size of the bottle. Uh, especially here in the tropics where it gets really hot on most days and the rabbits are really consuming a lot of water. These bottles are a bit on the small side because uh, this isn't really intended for long term use. This is more for a carrying cage if we're transporting rabbits to another farm or something like that. So that's one option, but like I said, it takes some time to refill these bottles every day. I think the best use of these watering bottles would be in cases where you have uh, some type of medication that you want to give to one specific rabbit. In that case, it would make sense to use a water bottle so you wouldn't have to place that medication in the entire reservoir uh, that would then serve all of your rabbits. So in a case like that, a water bottle is ideal. But other than that, I think the automatic watering system is the best method to use. Now, there, there are different types of automatic watering systems. Uh, one that I've seen become quite popular uh, in recent times. This type from the pick here you will see these come in both metal and plastic and they usually connect the cage as from the outside as seen in the picture here and some type of tubing is used to connect those waterers to a reservoir of some type. My only issue with this type is that the tubing is usually a clear tubing and over time uh, a lot of algae tends to form on the inside of that tubing and because of its small diameter it would be a bit troublesome and difficult to clean maybe if you can get a tubing that's dark color like a black tubing of the same diameter that would work that would be a better option uh, you'll eliminate that uh, little issue i think uh, this type of water is a lot cheaper price wise than the PVC options that I'm going to show you. So um, anyone who uses them, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know how durable they are, how long they last, uh, how often you have to change them out because I know most of these are spring loaded and from time to time the springs go in them. So let me know in the comment section 
how durable this type of water is are because we've never actually used that time. Now, this is a little model I have here uh, to show three different types of the PVC version of the automatic water. In each case here, they have a brass nipple. Uh, let me take this apart so you guys can see it better. Okay, so you have uh, three different types here. This one is a PVC T, and these two, as you can see, they don't go all the way around the pipe. These two are usually referred to as pipe saddles. So in this, these two cases, there's a little nipple on the inside of this, of the base of this here, and you have to drill a hole into the pipe for that nipple to enter and then the saddle sits on top of that so obviously you're going to need some type of pvc solvent to hold them in place in this model here the hole is drilled to the top in this one here the hole is drilled to the side of the pipe or to the front of the pipe that will be facing you all of them have this type of brass water in nipple right it's spring loaded so that when the rabbits nibble on this here it releases water and when they release it seals again so it doesn't leak like with everything else over time you're gonna have to change the springs in these or just change the entire nozzle but these are quite durable they are made of brass and they last quite long i haven't changed any of these in about two years they last really long and i think hence the, the, the price bracket as well i go with them because i think they are more durable as well as being PVC pipes, they are a lot sturdier and it's easy to flush out these lines from time to time. Now, let me take this apart. So, as you see, these two are the saddles where you would drill a hole in the pipe and then attach them. This one is the T. This is the one that we use mostly. Right? You can see straight through there, it's a T. So, and it's a half inch PVC. So the pipe simply goes in here and you glue it on. And then you glue the other pipe on here and you continue to the next cage. I'll show you how it's set up on our cages in a while. And then these brass nipples simply screw into place. I usually put a bit of tread seal on this to help with the seal so that it doesn't leak. You want to ensure that your waterers aren't leaking because one, you're going to waste a lot of water as well as the area where that water keeps dripping in your cage. You're going to compromise your wire over a period of time. That's the area of the cage where you're going to see the wire beginning to rust a bit earlier than anywhere else in the cage as your wire ages. So you want to make sure that these aren't leaking. Ah, it's only 7.30 a.m. here and it's already hot. Ah, sweating. Oh, okay, so we're talking about automatic watering systems. And one thing that needs to be considered, uh, it's not a problem here in the tropics, certainly not here in Trinidad and Tobago, where it gets so hot. But in temperate regions like uh, North America and Europe and where they have winters, freezing is an issue. With automatic water and systems, the water temperature has to be monitored because uh, the water in your reservoir as well as in the lines can freeze depending on how low the temperature drops. So in cases like that, uh, that might be another instance where persons may opt to use uh, water bottles because then they can swap them out. You have one indoors and you can constantly swap them out so that the rabbits will have water to drink. Uh, I feel your pain and I'm extremely happy that we don't have any winters here in Trinidad so that's not an issue for us. What I've seen on other videos that some people do is that they install some type of heater to their reservoir so that the water temperature never drops low enough so that the water freezes. Of course that will be a slightly additional cost to you to keep your water heated and keep your lines from freezing. Uh, they will also have to insulate their lines, whether it's tubing or PVC, 
you're going to have to use some type of insulation to help maintain that temperature to prevent freezing. So that's an issue for the guys where you have winters. Here in Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean, we long for a couple of cool days every now and then, right? Because it gets really hot out here. So we don't have any issues with freezing or anything like that. Now we're going to talk about how you connect your waterers to your water reservoir. On a small scale, a lot of people tend to use uh, five gallon buckets as their reservoir. And that's fine uh, if you don't have to keep refilling that five gallon bucket. Uh, the best option would be to install a small float valve in that five gallon bucket that then connects to your water main so that that bucket will remain full at all times so your rabbits will always have water where as far as the, the tubing goes one of the best options is something called a grommet if you see to the side there you'll see that there's a sort of ring straight around the middle of it where this works is that you drill a small hole smaller than your grommet obviously uh, this is not a bucket obviously, this is a cover that I use to form an airtight seal for my wine containers But it's the same grommet, right? So you drill a hole there and then the grommet fits into this hole and the, the rim of the hole fits snug into that little groove you see there So let me see if I can get this in here a bit tight to get in but once you get it in there then you have, okay, and then your tubing simply fits into this hole really <clears throat> snug and it forms an air and water tight seal. All right, now this is, I use these grommets to form airtight seals for my wine containers because I do a lot of wine making and this works perfectly. This is the, I don't recall it. The name of this right now, strangely enough. Let me know in the comments, guys. I'm sure some of you out there do a lot of winemaking at home as well. That's quite common here in the Caribbean. Uh, but this is used to form an airtight seal so that the carbon dioxide that's produced during the winemaking process can escape. But uh, air can't get in, so air and bacteria can't get in to spoil your wine. So... But it's the same grommet that can be used on a bucket with your tubing to form a watertight seal to feed your waterers. Okay. Another option is what we call a, a uni seal. These are quite common as well. This one is a three quarter inch. They come in different sizes. Uh, the smallest I've seen is half inch PVC pipe. Uh, so what you do with this is that, similar to the grommet, you drill a hole in your bucket that this fits into quite snug and then PVC pipe is simply forced into here. Now it's, it's a really tight fit, so sometimes you need to bevel the end of this pipe here a bit and use a bit of lubricant. You could probably use a bit of uh, vegetable oil or something like that, or KY, you know, as many purposes. And it, goes in so what happens is that as the pipe is forced through the uniseal here it pushes out onto the rubber that hugs the side of the hole and it forms a watertight seal there so this is also an option uh, if you're here in Trinidad and Tobago uniseals aren't commonly found in most stores you're gonna have to check uh, stores that deal primarily with aquaponics and hydroponics and you're gonna get these regular hardwares don't have them most guys in the hardware don't even know what a uni seal is so you can definitely check that out as well as you can buy them online Amazon and places like that but they are available locally here just check your hydroponics and aquaponics stores and you'll be able to get some of these they come in all sizes we've used as far up as six inch uni seals just be mindful that when you're using grommets and uni seals as well the hole needs to be very neat a very neat hole so you're going to use either a hole saw 
or what's called a spade bit to drill that hole very neatly. Okay guys, this is an example of uh, the Uniseal in action here. This is on a 55 gallon drum. This is a wine drum that I have here in my little winery. And you can see it's a complete seal, no leak there whatsoever. And this drum is, is filled with wine. Okay, if you're using buckets, there's one other option. And we use this option a lot in our aquaponic systems. Uh, and that is where you use simply it's a pvc male adapter with a rubber gasket that forms the seal and a pvc lock nut as well so again you're gonna drill a hole into your bucket like that and you're gonna place this male adapter into a hole like that then on the inside you're gonna place the gasket and then the lock nut. Give it a nice tight turn, not too hard to break anything, and that forms a watertight seal from your bucket. And this is we use this option a lot for our Dutch buckets in the aquaponic systems, and we've never had any leaks. So you're gonna then simply connect PVC pipe onto this and run it to your water as something to remember most automatic water systems uh, the water supply is gravity fed so if you're going to use any device a bucket or anything that you're going to be that you're going to use it should be placed at height above the level of your waterers so that you're going to use gravity to bring the water down to these water nozzles if you put it lower then you're going to have to utilize a pump and you don't want to incur any additional cost so the height obviously that you have to place this is going to factor into how large your reservoir actually is because obviously you're going to have to create some type of stand to hold up the weight of whatever container you decide to use so that's something to consider in our case we have gone way past those options so we use a 400 gallon tank and it's on a concrete tank stand. I think in the back up here, you can see a black tank up there. That's a 400 gallon water tank. That's the tank that supplies water to our rabbitry. And that is a concrete decking that was built there over our office. So you have a number of options when you're looking at setting up your reservoirs for your automatic water pieces. Last but not least, if you're going to be using a large container like a 400 gallon tank or even a 55 gallon drum one of the best options is usually what we call a bulkhead fitting uh, they come in all different sizes as well this is a one and a half inch bulkhead fitting uh, so same same thing again you're going to drill a hole large enough for this to fit into and we have a rubber gasket here as well so the gasket goes on and it's usually put on from the inside and then from the outside you will screw on the lock nut uh, something to note with bulkhead fittings they screw on anti-clockwise where you usually turn these nuts clockwise in the case of bulkhead fittings they go on anti-clockwise right? just something to remember especially when you're tightening Right? And then this, this is the best option for a watertight seal, but obviously it's going to cost a bit more than all the other options you saw before. But this is the best, most foolproof option. Uh, of course, now if you're buying bulkheads, you must buy male adapters because that's the way the pipe connects to it. Because it has a inner threading, so the male adapter would screw in like that and then you can connect your pipe and go to your water obviously this is a large size but like i said it comes in smaller sizes you can get them in half inch three quarter inch all the way up or if it's a big drum and you're using inch and a half like this you can simply use a reducer to reduce to the size pipe that you want to use in this case half inch so you can get a reducer from inch and a half to half inch 
and you can run your water lines straight to your water lines. Now, a common question we get from persons who are interested in using automatic watering systems is uh, how long will it take the rabbits to learn to drink from a water? The short answer to that is not very long at all. Uh, inside of a few minutes, your rabbits will learn to drink from this. This is actually designed to feed their curiosity because rabbits are naturally curious. They're going to always be exploring their cage or a new cage that you put them into and they have a natural instinct to nibble on anything that's pointed. So it's designed with that point for that specific reason. So as soon as they see this point, they're going to naturally nibble on it just out of curiosity. And when they do nibble on it, they're going to realize that water comes out of this. So they're going to repeat that behavior and then it's going to become natural to them that whenever they want water, they go to this spot and nibble on this water. Some people, when they install automatic watering systems, they leave the water bottles onto the cage for a while, a couple of days or so, until they are convinced that the rabbits know that this is where they have to drink from, and then they remove the water bottles. We've never done that because it doesn't take that long. They figure this out in a couple minutes time, and then they're off to the races from there. So no need to really leave the water bottle but if you just have that little fear about your rabbits going without water leave the bottle for a couple of days after monitor them as long as you see them drinking from this you can remove the bottle one other thing we need to look at uh, is the placement of your automatic waterers i've visited farms before and i've noticed that some people place their waterers too high on the cage we would recommend that when you're installing your waterers, that you don't place them more than six inches from the floor of your cage. Better yet, if it's four inches, we usually do them about four inches from the bottom of the cage, especially in our breeder cages, because that then gives the kids the opportunity to learn very early on how to use these waterers. So as soon as they start hopping out of the box and moving around the cage, they too are going to find, hey, this is curious, and they're going to nibble on it, and they're going to realize they can get water here. Because if you install this waterer too high, they're not going to be able to reach it, and then their only source of fluids is going to be their mother's milk, and it's going to be a bit of stress on the mother as well as the kids because they won't be getting enough fluid. Because you have to remember, as soon as they start moving around that cage, they too are going to start nibbling on the concentrate feed and any other feed that you put in that cage. So they're going to need additional water to drink. So you want to be sure that they can reach the waterers to be able to drink for themselves. This is an example here. Uh, this is the line that it's coming from our, our tank or reservoir and this line that runs along the back of the cage now you can run it on the inside as well but it, for us it's easier if we run it on the outside in case you have to do any type of maintenance it's easy to simply remove the entire line and change it or change our water arrive so desired so it runs along the back and as you can see it's just about four inches from the floor of the cage so the doors or box as well as the kits can easily reach the water. Here is a perfect example. So we have a doe here with a litter of one, three, four, five, seven. Right? This is our doe that made 11. Uh, so far, 10 are still alive. Uh, three were fostered to another doe. And one from the eight that was left with her died. So she has seven here. And you can see there. Our waterer is just about four inches from the floor of the cage so that everyone can reach it and drink. So uh, for those of you who've never used waterers, uh, these are spring loaded. So the spring holds the nozzle, the nipple out where it forms a seal. But the minute you touch it, right, water comes out. And when it's released, it forms a watertight seal again so it doesn't leak. So guys, we're going to leave it there for today.
I hope you guys found this video useful. Obviously, if you have any other questions concerning automatic watering systems, drop a comment below and we'll respond to you or we'll follow up on that in a subsequent video. If it's your first time here with us, definitely hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little bell so you'll get notifications whenever we upload new content. Also, share this video with anyone else who you think would be interested in the type of content that we share. Really happy to have you guys here with us. We really appreciate the support that you all have given us. And we look forward to seeing you guys in our next video. So this is Sean Austin. On behalf of my business partner, Sean McLean, from Sean's Rabbit and Aquaponic Produce, we're signing out. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.